Welcome to the Breakup Recovery Podcasts by your host, Barbara Stevens. Discover the wisdom and remarkable insights of Barbara Stevens, breakup recovery mentor, author, and public speaker. Barbara offers programs and solutions for any breakup so you can turn your life around, create lasting changes for the better, and embrace life again. Hello and welcome to my podcast, Breakup Recovery. This is episode number 032. I'm Barbara Stevens, and in this episode of Breakup Recovery, I have with me Kate, who has agreed to share her breakup story with us. So welcome, Kate. Hello. Um, so Kate, tell me briefly about your relationship, how you met your partner, and how long were you together for? We actually met through a friend of mine. We were both in the, I suppose, the art community. We were really young, probably 18 or so when we met and we just sort of hit it off at a theatre production that we were both working on and we were together for about five years altogether. So were there any challenges in your relationship? Earlier on there really weren't but in saying that I think in hindsight my youth probably made me blind to quite a lot of challenges that we had. It was only sort of in the later couple of years that Things like him travelling a lot for work and he and I disagreeing on the paths that we should be taking in terms of uh, both of our careers kind of started to become an issue. There were some other things that sort of went on as well. Yes, the issues probably existed all along. I just didn't realise until later. And some of them I didn't notice until after everything was done with as well, which was the hardest bit, I think. So were you quite young when you met your partner? We were very young and neither of us had really had any kind of long-term relationships prior to that. So I think we kind of went in blind a little bit. Uh, Now I would approach that relationship in a very different way to how I did at 18 and youth played a big part in that, I think. So how long ago was your actual breakup, Kate? Well, we broke up probably at the very start of 2013, a good three years and a bit now. And can you describe your breakup for me? It blindsided me at the time, but looking back on it, I should have known for a good six months. He was traveling a lot for work and he was extremely close to his boss. And I started to notice the phone wasn't left in the room if he walked out for some reason anymore, or it would be face down. I'd noticed things like he'd always be talking about her instead of just sort of general work things. Work conversations only existed in the context of his boss, basically. And I'd brought it up with him a few times and been told, ah, you know, you're being one of those jealous girls. You hate girls like that. So I I felt like I didn't have any reason to doubt him, I suppose. He hadn't done anything to cause me to not trust him before. So I just... I guess closed my eyes to it a little bit and then one day he basically went on a film shoot for a couple of weeks with this girl came home walked straight in the door and just said yeah we're we're done you know at the time I had no idea what was going on I was in shock I didn't know left from right for about four or five days it took me that long to actually process that hang on that did that actually just happen (laughs) So he came home and virtually packed his bags and left? Yeah, well, he got me to leave. (laughs) (laughs) I know. Oh, looking back, I could have been a lot, I feel like I could have been a lot more decisive (laughs) or something. But yeah, at the time, he he just sort of walked in and was, yeah, we're we're done. Probably want to go stay at your parents now, to which I I kind of just, with my eyes very wide, nodded and said, "Uh, yeah, uh, okay, called my mum went and stayed at their place and and that was kind of it it's only afterwards that everything else came out the reasons for why he did that at the time I just had no idea so emotionally how were you feeling at the time of your breakup for the first couple of days I felt it would have been shock it was shock disbelief it very quickly turned to anger though I I feel like I went through those stages of grief that people talk about 
not necessarily in the order that people talk about. And, and in a very, very short amount of time, I went from shock to just complete anger, I suppose, after I figured out exactly what had been going on. But definitely over a longer term, the the main feeling I had was just feeling completely stupid. Um, I always thought that I was sort of a smart, independent person. I've always had like a good career and been a high achiever and and then felt like all of these really, really obvious, terrible things that had been happening for the last year of our relationship, I just hadn't seen. So I felt stupid. And that didn't go away for a really long time. I didn't deal with the fact that I felt stupid and taken advantage of at all. So how do you think you did get through your breakup, Kate? For a long time, there was putting up a shield. So I was kind of caving on on the inside away from everyone else but I kept up this really really you know strong exterior and everyone's saying oh I don't know how you're dealing with this so well what a horrible situation you're doing fine the only reason I ended up actually dealing with it eventually was essentially having a a full-on breakdown Uh, just before my cousin's wedding I'd been sick for weeks I I couldn't hold down food I couldn't I felt like I was everything was making me sick I had allergies to everything and my hair and skin was awful and and it it kind of all just came to a head and it was actually just within about a month of meeting my current partner it was almost like everything finally started to get good again and that was just the straw that broke the camel's back and I just sort of had a full full on breakdown. My new boyfriend and my parents basically rushed me off to speak to a a psychologist and all of my friends suddenly started supporting me or I started seeking support from them the way that I should have earlier on. So it was, I had to hit rock bottom before I actually started getting help from people. And at what time frame was this hitting rock bottom? I would say it was about 18 months later. So you held it all in for 18 months. For a really long time. A really long time. It's amazing that I didn't break down sooner. And it was stupid. It was, it was pride that was keeping me from letting people help me. I just wanted to feel like if he was clever and cunning enough to have gotten away with seeing his boss on the side for such a long time without me realising it, then it was almost like I had to have a win by being really strong for a really long time straight afterwards and and being very much like, oh, well, that's his loss, I'm fine. Okay, so then at 18 month mark, you had a breakdown. So what tools or strategies did you use to move forward and to almost get better, to enjoy life again? I did get a lot of help from the friends and family that I hadn't been letting help me earlier. And seeing a psychologist and actually just sitting there and venting about everything really helped. And it helped me put things into perspective in terms of, I suppose, realising that it wasn't my fault, that I didn't do anything wrong, identifying that the reason I'd been feeling so sick and awful was that I had stressed myself over this situation. It wasn't that I was actually sick. So it kind of took that off my mind because I'd started I suppose spiraling into thinking oh I'm really ill why do I have all these horrible symptoms so it was really just intense period of I suppose reflection and talking and learning the feelings of stress and anxiety before they hit fully because I had been having sort of panics about it and didn't really know what they were so once I knew that that was happening it made it a lot easier to deal with actually and seeing the psychologist was a good thing for you to do oh absolutely it was I feel like it was I should have done it a lot earlier and I I would tell anyone now who is even feeling that something is not quite right to actually just go even if it's once and just talk and it was amazing how much better I felt from just getting everything out there to someone who was kind of disconnected from my circle of friends and family. I think that was part of it, again, with the 
I suppose the pride side of it is not wanting to appear vulnerable to people that I was close with. And for some reason it was, it was okay to talk to a psychologist who I knew is not going to go and, you know, talk, talk with other people I know. It was just, I, it was almost like I was talking and into a vacuum and I knew no one else was going to hear it and it made it so much better. It was as if she wasn't going to judge you at all. I never got that feeling. She, and she somehow just knew what to ask and how to talk to me in a way that didn't make me feel stupid and didn't make me feel like this had all happened because of something that I'd done. You know, it, she was great at just listening and putting things in perspective for me a little bit too in a way that I wasn't able to do for myself. And you said that you started to then ask for and seek the support from your family and friends. How did that happen and what support did they give you? I suppose the most part was just they didn't even necessarily have to do anything, you know, like bringing me dinners or or anything like that. It was really more just them saying, okay, we get that you're struggling and we're here. It was more like they had their hands up saying, okay, we know we're here. It's fine. But they didn't, yeah, they didn't make me feel like I was broken and that they needed to, to fix me. It was, it was just a nice, it was like the hands were there ready to catch me if something went wrong, I think was the, the best bit of it. And so how do you feel now, Kate? Oh, really? I feel great. I feel like weirdly, weirdly great. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I actually had to talk to my ex for the first time in about, it would have been the first time we spoke to each other since basically the divorce proceedings. And I, I kind of had this little bit of anger in the back of my mind, even until a couple of weeks ago, thinking, ah, uh, you know, I still hate him, he's still a bit of a jerk. And when we actually had to speak, I, weirdly enough through my work I had this amazing realization that I'm not angry at him anymore I'm not trying to feel anything I just genuinely no longer cared and I thought that's that shows that I'm actually over it and things are great and I'm working in a job that he had told me for years that I shouldn't bother trying to you know oh you shouldn't go into this industry, you'll never get work. It's a joke. Stay in your, your boring nine to five. And, you know, I'm doing I'm sort of doing everything that he said I could never do. But I also don't feel like I need to prove that to him. I'm, I'm just living my life and doing my own thing. And I have great friends who, you know, never deserted me through all of my sort of weird behaviors when I was really <laughs> stressed out. <laughs> so I'm great. And I, I don't, give a crap where he is now or what he's doing you know he can go and live his life and it's fine I don't mind I will ask you one question about yeah. him is he still with his boss the woman he yes. who he had the affair with yes he is if it was going to end a five-year relationship for him I guess I'm glad that it was worth it <laughs> and he's happy now I suppose that's all I can say it's uh he's definitely definitely still with her all this time later Have you got any tips that you would like to pass on to other women that are going through the same situation that you went through five years ago? Or it wasn't Um, five years ago, was it? Well, it was, yeah, about three, three and a bit. Three years ago. I think my my number one first piece of advice would be, like in my situation, you know, finding out that he'd been really, really incredibly unfaithful for a very, very long period of time, I would say don't feel stupid for not noticing anything Uh, even if later on you can see that all the signs were there and and later on you can see that he was actually treating you really badly that's not a reflection on you that's a reflection on him and you have to understand that part of being in a relationship and loving someone is not distrusting them I suppose I'm not sure if that's quite the right word but if you're with someone, you shouldn't be looking for reasons not to trust them. So to be blindsided by something like this obviously hurts, but don't feel stupid for it. Really, don't feel stupid. And 
look for help from someone before you think you really need it. Don't try and push on through feeling awful, even if you have the slightest bit of doubt that you're not coping. Even if you talk to someone and they say, you know what, I think you're doing okay. Mm. At least you tried to address it because otherwise it will snowball and it will get to you when you don't expect it. Kate, thank you for being willing to share your story. I find your story very interesting and you're so honest about how you didn't cope and then you hit rock bottom and then you did seek help professionally as well as taking the support of your family and friends. Thank you for your ideas and thank you for your honesty. I'm quite sure there are a lot of other women that are in your position or have been in your position and don't quite know how to move on and I'm hoping that they've taken some of your advice and can now move forward. So thank you Kate again. Thank you, no problems. If you would like to hear previous Breakup Recovery podcasts, visit barbastevens.com.au. Connect with Barbara Stevens on social media with Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor on Facebook and at You'll Be Okay on Twitter. Read further blogs, view webinar replays, and download your free ebook, Three Easy Steps to Surviving Your Breakup, and much more at barbastevens.com.au.